uh, the nine, uh, nine dragons. It's, I say it's an asterisk because I really feel I've written 14 Harry Bosch books. Uh, it gets called the 15th because of Brass Verdict, which Harry Bosch plays an integral part in, but it's not a Harry Bosch book, it's a Mickey Holler book, if you got to classify any of my books. Anyway, um, it's, um, I've been on the road for about a week on this book, and I started out talking lots about it and got some complaints about it giving too much away, so um, <laughs> I've come to realize it's, it's, it's a um, difficult book for me to talk about, usually that's not the case, but um, the things that drew me to the story, the things that I think are important about the story are really things I can't talk about. And when we, <laughs> also when we get to questions, please be real careful what you ask about, because a couple days ago I saw a man literally torn apart by uh, the crowd when he asked the wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I've been um, I've been extremely lucky as as a writer. Um, I recently was um, a guy from LA Weekly, up, uh, obviously up in LA, was uh, doing a story on me and wanted to see some of my old stories I wrote for the LA Times. So I was looking for some of them, and I came across a story for, uh, from January 27, 1989 in which I wrote about a murder on Woodrow Wilson Drive up in the Hollywood Hills in Los Angeles, a murder that took place in front of David Hockney, the painter's house. And that made it an interesting story by the LA Times standards, so they sent me up there uh, to write about it. And I realized when I found that story was that was the day I decided, when I went up to Woodrow Wilson Drive, that was when I discovered where Harry Bosch would live. And so that meant for 20, a little over 20 years now, I've been thinking and writing about Harry Bosch, and it is, it's really beyond words to describe what a gift that is to a writer to be able to carry a character through two decades. And Harry's evolved in real time, and he's changed, and the city's, his city has changed, and everything's changed. And to be given that um, chance as a writer uh, to keep, keep with him is, is uh, fantastic. Um, a lot of it's because of uh, people like you who have been riding with me and riding with Harry all along, and I certainly appreciate that. And what, what that has done is I've evolved as a writer, and, but more particularly, I've evolved in how I look at Harry Bosch and so forth. And, um, you know, initially when you're writing your first novel, you don't know if anyone other than you and your mother is ever going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> and in that way, uh, I have a daughter who's in seventh grade, and I, it's almost like when she's hoping to get invited to um, the cool kids' uh, birthday party. <laughs> you hope someone will love your book and it will get published and you'll get invited to the party. And that happened to me. And then they asked me for another Harry Bosch book and then another. And so I uh, spent a lot of time hoping they wouldn't realize I wasn't supposed to be at the party and kick me out. And then eventually <laughs> you realize no one's going to kick you out from the party. And I've reached this point where I am very confident that I can write about Harry Bosch for as long as I want to. Mm -hmm. And then again, that's that gift that's been given to me continuing. And what comes out of that is um, you start thinking more. I used to write with my head down, and I would think I can't um, leave anything out. I can't hold over anything for the next book because there might not be a next book. And while I still have that view, I also have this additional view of knowing there will be a next book, and there will be another one after that. And so it kind of has two things going at once where I'm trying to put everything into what I'm writing, but I'm also thinking about what will I do with Harry in the future. And one of the things that it's an easy kind of gimme is that you can do a fish out of water story. And it's not, when I say it's a gimme, I don't mean it in terms of uh, you lightly decide, oh, I'm gonna take Harry to Hong Kong or something like that. You really think about it because not only are you taking not only is your character a fish out of water, but you will be so as a writer and your and your readers. Um, there's uh, a comfort zone. Harry is comfortable operating in the bureaucracy and politics of the LAPD and the city of Los Angeles. I'm, as a writer, I'm comfortable writing about him in that milieu. And as a reader, I think when you pick up a book that says a Harry, this is a Harry Bosch novel, you're expecting to see that. And so I knew I was playing with all those things when I decided to write a fish out of water story. So what I did was take a lot of time with it. I thought about it for a long time. I actually kind of uh, auditioned cities because another good fortune that has befallen me by through this writing game and through the longevity of Harry Bosch is that I've gotten to travel around a lot of the world 
and so I would go to places like Johannesburg and Amsterdam and Tasmania and things like that, the Tasmania, and um, I would think, is this where I should take Harry? Would this be a good place to set a story? And at different times, I thought different things like yes, and at one time I was playing around with a novel set in Amsterdam, and but then I abandoned it. And then one, uh, and about six years ago, I went through Hong Kong on a uh, book tour, and I was there like probably less than six hours before I instinctively thought this would be a pretty cool place to take Harry on a fish out of water story because it, it has some things about it that really match up with LA. Um, this vibrancy, this uh, the crowding, the diversity, and most of all, this almost palpable sense that anything can happen, anything good or anything bad, and that adds an edge to any kind of story that you would set there. So I set my sights on Hong Kong, and a few books between then and now, I've, I've set up uh, a story. I, I you know, one, one of the books I had, Harry's young daughter move with his ex-wife to Hong Kong. And if that's not planting a seed, I don't know what, what it is. And, and that was pretty much setting up what this story would be about. And like I said, I don't want to get too much into the story. I think in general, I mean, a lot of this probably already known anyway, but um, in general, it's a story about, um, well, first I should say, I hope it's a great thriller. I hope it's a good mystery. I hope it's a puzzle. I hope it meets all those things we, we who love the genre need in our stories. And I think I've done that. Hopefully I've done that. But there's also a heart beating behind those things. And, and I think the heart of this story is a story about uh, uh, Harry Bosch's vulnerability. Um, if you've been riding along with Harry from the beginning, you know he views himself or believes himself, right or wrong, as a guy on a mission, a guy who is on this earth for a reason. He was, he was given a reason, and he wants to follow that out. He, he has a skill in taking a certain kind of evil out of the quotient, out of the, out of the world. And uh, to do that properly, he's very consciously and even subconsciously built himself to be invulnerable, to be what he says is bulletproof. In other words, I'm not talking about a vest that he would wear. I'm talking about not being able to be gotten to so that he can be relentless and follow a case without um, pause, without um, second guessing himself. And that's what I'd say the first half of this um, series has been about. And then a little more than halfway through, he realizes or he finds out in one of the books called Lost Light, he meets a little girl, a five year old girl, um, and realizes that's my daughter and when that in that moment everything about his um, invulnerability changes he becomes vulnerable he can be gotten to and that set up this book um, this is the book where Harry gets gotten to and I'll just kind of leave it at that just two other things I would mention before we uh, go to questions or one the, the, explain the titles the titles are always very interesting you know, when you write a book it's your book and yes you deal with a editor and so forth, but you know nothing gets changed that you don't want to change. And you work in a vacuum until the point you turn it in. But as soon as you turn in a title, whether you've given them the title way in advance of turning in your manuscript, you, you move into the world of marketing and publishers are all over that. And so whereas you know I, my books will be turned in with, with little comment, titles are always um, very important. I've had several titles. Uh, changed, um, not without my approval, but with my kind of begrudging approval and so forth. And uh, I mean, I turned in one book, just before I get back to Nine Dragons, I turned in a book um, that was it, was, it was published as City of Bones, which is a good title. I like that title a lot. Um, and I, I was the one who came up with that title, but only after my original title was changed. And it's a story, if you remember that one, it's a story that really deals with the uh, cohesive nature of police and the thin blue line and so forth. And there's several references to the cult of the blue religion, meaning the police department. And so I turned that book in called The Blue Religion. And immediately it was met with uh, roaring silence. Um, <laughs> and then they, they finally approached me and said, nah, we don't like that title too much. Uh, if you put religion, religion is an ex uh, exclusionary word. It's not an inclusive word. If you put religion in a title, I think you're going to lose a lot of readers because they're going to think it's about religion. And a lot of people don't want to read about religion. And so the pressure was on to change it. 